Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to use the gradebook, speed grader, and also how to create rubrics so that it's easier for you to grade on Canvas and it makes it easier for the students to know exactly how they're going to be graded so that they have the tools they need to be successful in the assignments that you are creating online. If you haven't seen any of my videos yet before, I have an entire tutorial that I'm adding to every single week with videos specifically about Canvas. Keep coming back if you want more videos, make sure you subscribe, click the like button for thumbs up if these are helping you and let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is some examples. I teach a lot of performance-based classes and now that we're online, um, this is what I already do face-to-face. -face. But now that I'm online with my students, they already know how they're gonna be graded. So here's a great example. Here is an assignment that I created in the assignments module. Um, what I do is I give them a breakdown in the, in the notes up here in the page when you create this page and this assignment. But I also give them a rubric so they know exactly how they're going to be graded and what I am looking for. Again, you want to be specific to your students. You want them to know what you're looking for. I'm looking for this song to be memorized from start to finish. I want you to have a clear point of focus and objective. Um, did you slate before your song? Did you have inner dialogue that we've discussed in class? And then these are all of the points that each of these are worth. And then I have a place that I can leave comments to them. So it's a really great way for the students to know how you're going to grade them. Another great example is when I have them present a monologue. I always give them tips as well up here. But again, I'm giving them exactly here in the rubric what I want them to do so that I can then grade them on that and you can edit this and whatnot, but it's a really easy way for them to know what you want them to do. So when you're in Canvas, if you click on the left side over here in Grades, you're going to see, and I'm blocking all these out because these are this is an old class, but for my students' privacy, you're gonna see all of the names of the students on the left side, okay? So I see all the students' names on the left side with all their personal and private information. And then at the top over here, you're going to see across, you're gonna see all of the different grades for all of these different students. Now, something that you can do is you can literally click on the grade here. And when you click it, it highlights it, you can input the grade. So if you're just wanting to input a grade, maybe you already are transitioning from face to face to canvas and you want to input grades that they already have. So it's all solidified in here, create the assignment and then go through and you can literally just type in the grade. You can literally put the number in whether you have a set up as percent or points, and you can add that in no problem very easily, okay? What you can also do is you can click on the hamburger over here, and this is again after you created all of your assignments and quizzes and exams. If you click over here on speed grader, it pops you over into this fast way of grading, and it's going to be the easiest way for you to grade your students' papers. So for example, this is a research paper, and if it's a PDF that they have uploaded already, and I did a video about this, if you wanna check it out, I'll link it up here in the cards for you. But after they upload their video, you can not only edit and, and put notes and comments into them over here, but here on the far right, you can um, put in notes to them down here at the bottom, and you can put in a grade here. And then all you have to do is click the arrow at the top right hand corner and it goes to the next student in order. And you can also click the name up here and you can scroll through them. If it has a green check mark, that means you have already graded that assignment for them. So you can see if you haven't graded it, it will have a, a dot next to it besides a check mark. So you can scroll through all of your students' names up here at the top and it makes it a little bit easier to grade everything. Now, the best thing you can do is to start with speed grader and go through them. And that way you know what you have and haven't graded. But again, if you use speed grader, it's really easy to also see up here at the top what the, what, what the grades are, what the average grade is, how many that you have graded compared to how many there are. There's 82 in this class and I had, I'm looking at two of 82. So it's a really great way for you to grade papers easily. Okay, you can also go back on the top left-hand corner on this little check mark and it will go back to your um, grade book in that assignment where you were. Okay, so you can also, this is really interesting in grade book here to note that you can sort them different ways. You can sort them by grades, you can sort them by late, missing, 
Um, you can curve your grades in here. I don't, I don't do that, um, but it's an option for you as well. You can enter a grade also as, as um, points or as a percentage. I like percentage because I feel like it offers the student an easy way to digest their grade to know I made an A, B, C, or D. Um, but again, that's just how I, how I do it. You can also up here, when you have an assignment that's coming up due, and I, I'll try to do this in all of my classes, especially online classes, if they haven't turned the assignment in and you're getting close to the due date or time, you can click message students who, and you can go over here and you can click that haven't submitted yet, or um, haven't been graded or scored less than this or scored more than, than that, I click the haven't submitted yet, okay? And then it will pop up right here, the students that have not submitted. And then I will type the message saying, hey, I notice you haven't submitted your, your paper yet or your journal yet or um, the quiz yet. I notice you haven't done it. Um, please remember it's due by tonight at midnight, just a friendly reminder to help you out. And I've noticed a lot of students are right back and they're like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot. Thank you so much. Or yes, I know I was waiting um, until the, later today to do it, but thanks for the reminder. It's just a great way for you to reach out to your students and let them know that, hey, just wanna give you a friendly reminder that this is coming up, especially when you're teaching online. You need to offer more reminders to your students because you don't get that face-to-face -face connection. So that's a great way for you to send a reminder if they haven't done it yet. Another thing you can do up here is, um, let's go over here. Another thing you can do is grade posting policy. Over here, you can click automatically, which means the assignment grades will be visible to the students as soon as you enter them, okay? Or manually, they will be hidden by default and any grades that have already posted will remain visible. So you have a couple of options that you can do here. What my school does, well, I teach at a different, few different schools right now, but what they will do is a lot of times they will hold the grade until you go in and say, I want to send all of the grades out now. So for example, here, if it says unpublished, that means that you haven't published that quiz or that it's not available to the students to even take. But a lot of times what you'll need to do is go in and you'll need to publish the grade. And I can't really show you that because I don't have any that are unpublished just yet. Um, but you'll, you might have to publish it. So it just kind of depends on your school and how they automatically have the grade booking system um, set up. Another helpful tip that has been really great for me is um, you can also reorder over here on the left side. You can display it first name, last name first. Um, you can kind of set it up however you would like on the left side. And then it's gonna allow, the assignments are gonna pop up here in the grade book in order of due date. So it kind of takes you through the entire semester um, or quarter, depending on where you're teaching. And at the very end, if you've got it situated in units, in your modules, they will pop up in units and then they will give a total on the far, far right. If you click on this key, this little gear at the top right over here, you can also add a couple of other options if you need this. You can automatically um, apply grade for missing assignments. You can say, I, I want to put a zero in here. What is helpful for this is if the students are just taking a quiz or an exam, you can make this a zero. And so after the assignment is due or completed, if it's just a quiz or an exam they take online that's automatically graded, it will automatically put a zero in for that student. You don't have to manually do it. Again, this is going to save you time and it will also save you a lot of energy. You can automatically apply deductions to late submissions so that it's automatically in there. This is why I love Canvas. You can set all this up so that it's doing the work for you and you have more time to spend with your students. So this is what I like to do. I like to manually post the grades because if I'm grading 80 something papers and I don't want every student to know when I'm grading it because I want them all to be released at the same time, I will manually post them, which means you'll have to go in and publish it. Um, just something I like to do. So let's talk about rubrics and how you can use, use them and how they may be helpful for you. So let's say, um, for example, I use it when they present a song. 
Okay, so here's my rubric down here. Um, it's going to, it's going to, when you're making a rubric, it's going to say add rubric. So for example, if you want to add a rubric, this one didn't have a rubric, um, but it'll go to the bottom of the assignment. This is after you create the assignment. Um, and if I already made a video for this, so I'll link it up in the cards if you missed it, click add rubric. Okay. After you click that, it's going to pop up this little form. What I like to do is I like to create rubrics and reuse them. So for example, in this class, I already have multiple rubrics and I can just use the same ones. So click the add rubric, okay? And then what you can do is you can make a title in here, okay? So you could um, research paper, so give it a title. And then you're gonna go over here and click the pencil and you can start to add in the description and you can add in a longer description. So for example, in this one, is the song fully memorized from start to finish? That is the first one, okay? So that is the description. And then the long, de long description I put is every single lyric of the song fully memorized from start to finish at performance level, all text must be memorized. So it's very, very clear to the students exactly what I'm grading them on, okay? You can do this for any type of assignment. So you would put all that in and then you would put, you would click update here at the bottom. So it'll pop it in over here, all of that description that I just talked about. And then you're gonna to wanna to put how many points everything is worth. Worth. Click on the pencil again, how many points is it worth? Um, and you can add in descriptions here as well, okay? And then you can also click full marks. Um, you can edit this as much as you want. You can add in different points and then how many points total over here. Um, you can click down here as well. I'll write freeform comments when assessing students and it will pop that up so you have a space to write in. That is something that is going to take you more time. So just be aware that that means you're gonna have a box and you're gonna wanna type it in. So if you have the time and it's a smaller class, you might wanna click on that. Um, remove points from rubric. That, will, that means that you will just it won't have any points. Either you get full marks like 100 or you get no marks, zero, whatever set you set this point system up to be. So you have a couple of options here and then you would click create rubric and it would pop it up into your system here. So for example, these were worth 20 points and I had room to write in on their rubric. So what I do is if I'm grading something and this is all in here, this is the assignment, they've turned it in, go to the top right, click speed grader, and it will pull up the student and the assignment that they have over here. On the far right, you can also use this bar, and if you click on the bar and hold it down, it will make it bigger. And this is what I do when I'm, when I'm grading. I make it really big if I'm watching them or if I'm grading a video that they submitted and it's not in the window on the left, I'll make it really big so that I can see all of this, okay? And if you click view rubric like I just did, it'll make it bigger. So this is what I mean about the comments. Was the song fully memorized from start to finish? It's gonna give you a comment box under every single criteria that you've listed. And I write comments in here for them. And then you have to go in here and put the points out of each one. And then at the end, it gives you a total Okay, you click save, after you click save, that grade is going to immediately be popped into this assignment. And then it will usually give you additional comments here at the bottom where you can add a file, you can record a video comment to them or just an audio comment to them. I like using the video and audio comments for online classes if it's not a big class. So if it's a smaller, um, performance-based class, then this is really helpful to them because it's more one-on-one. -on -one. Just depends again on what you need it for. So that's really how you can create some rubrics that are going to be helpful for you. So what I like to do is if I'm grading something, also what it will do is it will say how many have submitted. You can download them if you want. I don't like to download anything because I don't want anything saved to my computer. I will just go up here to the assignment and I will click speed grader and it will pop me right into start starting to be able to grade them. The more you look around and see and look at all of the other options you have, the more you're going to be able to learn what works for you and what is going to be beneficial to your students. So really, I would just suggest starting to 
play around with all of these different options that you have, but at least that gives you some basics and some tips. So I hope this helps you. Again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if there's anything else I can help you with or you need any topics specifically, leave in the comments below. Let me know what topics you need and I will try to put more videos out for you. All right, happy teaching everyone. I wish you all the very best. I'll see you at the next video. Bye.